So back in 2010, um, I shot a video at a um, Newmarket Nights concert uh, watching Spandau Ballet. Don't you dare chuck stuff at the screen. I won't hear a word about Tony Hadley. Just keep it quiet. Keep it under your hat. Right. Very, very good concert, by the way. Shame not to get her anymore, but there you go. So, how did I shoot that video? On a mobile phone. Like everyone else does, they shoot videos on mobile phones. Why? Because it's cheap. Most people own a smartphone, they're under a contract or pay as you go. You can pick them up anywhere, mainly a bloody supermarket. Right, at the time, I think it was shot on a Samsung phone. This phone, however, is a Windows phone. I don't use it for YouTube, purely and simply because it's a works phone and uh, they don't appreciate that sort of thing. So, this is my works phone. It's a Microsoft Windows phone. Absolutely useless at pretty much everything apart from taking pictures. Crap at everything else. Right. What's it being held up in? A very, very cheap tripod. Now, you can pick these up on eBay. Incredibly cheap, about three or four quid. Quite simple, it's got this clip on it. I'll take it out, which unscrews. These are about a quid off of eBay, again. There you go, that is it. That, and that, and a phone. That's pretty much it. You are off and running. You can have a YouTube channel. You want to improve the YouTube channel? Get one of these. It's got a little adapter plugged in. Uh, this is the adapter for the mic, which is the lav mic, which is all tangled up on the table, which is this. I actually use this on my DSLR, which I'm shooting with at the moment. I'll explain more about that camera in a bit. You must have one of these. I use this uh, with the iPad as well. When I do like a vlog on Instagram, very quick vlog, which most of you would have seen, uh, highly amusing, ha ha ha. Um, I use this a hell of a lot. You can get these anything from a fiver to 30 quid to 50 quid, depending on your budget. They all do pretty much the same thing. However, the cheaper ones, they do have an issue with the PC when you're doing voiceovers. I don't know why, it, I'm not, not a techno, I'm not an expert on technology, but you know, there's some reason it interferes, especially on Windows Movie Maker. Could be my mic, not too sure. Anyway, that is the setup. So if you want to get a YouTube channel going, a tripod, a camera, and a mic. All very, very cheap. Now, when I started getting into YouTube, I thought, well, if I'm snow foaming cars and I'm spraying them down, I'm gonna need something waterproof. So I went out and got one of these. This is a git up. No, not a git. That's something completely different in England. Um, if you look on Amazon and on eBay and put git up and git up two and read the reviews about this camera, this is an action camera or a GoPro knockoff, if that's what you want to call them. And you get a wealth of accessories with it, including you get the waterproof case, of which I have two, because the waterproof case you get with it to keep it all nicely sealed, you've got this seal going around it and it locks. There's no gap, of course, for the microphone. So, you have to go on eBay or Amazon and get one of these, which has an opening. And the company that I bought it from sent me the wrong one, so ended up cutting a hole in the side to put my microphone in it. That's basically what I walk around with when I'm at a car show, um, until I do the best, the, you know, the better shots and I switch over to the, the uh, DSLR. But that is basically it. Costs involved, 125 quid with everything in it. That's what you'll pay for a GitHub. You can get them cheaper, but with less stuff, they don't throw the spare batteries in. By the way, you do need spare batteries. And of course, a top tip for anyone who's got an action camera, God, it's hot in here, is when you go to like a car show or anything like that, and you're walking around, just keep it switched on. Don't keep turning it on and off, because you will drain the battery. The battery life's not brilliant, it's okay, depending on how many times you keep turning it on and off and, and faffing around with it. But basically, these are plug in and go cameras, and I will give you an idea of what the video quality is like and the um, audio. Even though I have shot up with them on my videos, I'll give you some little um, examples later on. So that's the git up. And of course, as I got into the videos, and um, especially. This year, I thought, I've got to up my game. I've got to get a better camera to show detail on cars and beading shots, you know, and, and, and better close-ups. So I went over to a DSLR. Now, I am now going to switch 
from the DSLR camera and the shotgun mic, which I'll talk about in a minute, over to the GitHub camera. So this is the sort of image quality you can get from the GitHub camera, this is the action camera. Obviously it's got this fisheye lens which has, has its downsides, but also you get a nice wide angle, making the general look even bigger and bigger. Now I'm going to switch over to the DSLR. So we're on full manual mode on the DSLR now. This is on single point focus mode. The ISO is set at 800 because of the uh, poor lighting in here. That's one thing I have got to uh, indulge myself in. It's some decent lighting. 50 frames a second. And of course you get that nice depth of field, that blurry background. And that's the difference. Sharper images as well. Right, this is the GitHub 2 camera. Not the GitHub 2 camera here, this is my Canon 700D, but you are watching this through the GitHub camera lens. This is a fisheye lens, much the same as any other action camera and GoPro. And this camera is a full DSLR. It has a shotgun mic, this is a Tackstar mic. These are around about 20 pounds, it's a directional mic. You need to be two or three feet away from this, facing the camera. If you're behind the camera, it sounds like you're talking through a dustbin. Uh, it's not a good idea. So you need to have two microphones. You have the lav mic, which uh, is attached to me at the moment, and you need one of these as well. And also, if you're shooting outside, you need one of these, a dead cat, all available online. Now, some key facts about this camera. I'll we'll swing it round. I'm no camera reviewer, but I will talk through it the best I can. It's got a really good feature if you're a vlogger. It's got a flip out screen, which turns the other way. So you can see yourself. So that's how you set the shots up. Now, there's loads of different options on this camera. When I shoot, I normally shoot in full manual mode on this style. And then I set up the ISO and all the um, aperture all on the back. I don't go fully automatic. And also I shoot at 50 frames per second. If you want to know a lot more about frame rates, I suggest you go into YouTube and look at camera setups for DSLR video and it'll tell you all about how to set these things up. Brilliant bits of kit, take a bit of getting used to. This was around £450. Yep, not cheap, but well worth it. So it's got an ultraviolet filter on the front and also it protects the main lens from any um, dust and debris. Battery life on this is absolutely incredible. Um, when I went to uh, Waxstock, oh my God, I mentioned Waxstock again. I used uh, one battery, didn't even run it into the red, and it was fine. Now, when it gets to this shotgun mic, you, there's a number of these on the market. Rode seems to be the most popular. You know, compare this the tax style mic uh, to the Rode one quite a lot. It's not perfect. It's sort of entry level shotgun mic. It does the job. It's got a battery, um, an AA battery. This one takes an AA battery. It's got a decibel uh, booster here. And um, this is the uh, low pass filter. I tried numerous um, videos with this in the garden to try and set it up the best I can. I think I've just about dialed it in. Now, it's, it plugs in down here. It's another reason for getting a DSLR with a uh, external mic. It plugs in down there. But when you get on the back of the camera, you have to set the um, sound parameters up as well. You have to manually do that. We won't go into that today because I said, I'm not a camera reviewer, but this is my setup. Now, what's it sitting on? It's sitting on a, a very nice tripod. This was actually donated from Demon Snapper, or Andy from Instagram. Brilliant bit of kit. Um, you can pick tripods up for as little as £20. Uh, I don't think this one was £20, Andy. It was a hell of a lot more money. And then we've got a very, very cheap tripod down here. That was around a tenner, a boot fare. So you've gone from a mobile phone over there, i.e. free, on a contract or pay as you go, to the get up camera, which is in my hand, to this. And then down here, this is my son's GoPro. 
Now we did use this in one of the videos on the back of the Golf. It's the most basic GoPro Hero there is. It's quite old. It's got an open back on it so you can get the sound to go in because you can get different backs for these. And that is it. That is my camera equipment. So it was turned on a DSLR, get your words out Paul, with the lav mic attached. This is the Git2 camera. Very, very well constructed this camera. Um, as I said, go on YouTube and look at some of the reviews and watch the footage. Obviously in some of my older videos, if you go certainly back to the uh, Honda EP3 video, um, look at that video and it will, that was all shot on this. Uh, it takes a memory card in the side, uh, up to 32 gig. Battery goes in the bottom. Really easy to uh, shoot. You just hit that button and it records. So take a look at the reviews. It's worth looking at. So this has been a really brief insight into the uh, equipment I've got. Obviously I've got a camera bag over here which you can, you know, when you go to a car show you're going to need to put your equipment in. It's expensive equipment, you don't want to drop it. Um, you know, we've got the DSLR in there with spare batteries, we've got my shotgun mic in there, and of course my tripods and stuff like that. Um, and think carefully about what you're going to spend your money on. And it's a big commitment doing YouTube. I'll just give you a, a couple of key facts. Um, when I wash a car or do anything to a car, it, it puts around two hours to three hours on the job. So if you're editing uh, camera positioning, um, getting it right first time, it, does, it doesn't work, I can assure you. Um, and just generally faffing around. But I love it. It's really, really good. It's a chance for me to let off steam at the end of the week. And I absolutely love doing these videos. So show your support. Give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe for more videos. Uh, we'll be back on the detailing products very, very soon. In fact, over the next couple of weeks, I've got some products to test. So keep your eyes peeled and follow me on Twitter and Instagram under this video. Catch you soon, guys, and thanks for watching. Teddy bye.